Hi everyone, welcome back at Charlotte from At Charlotte's House. I am outside, the cicadas are very loud, you probably can hear them, but I wanted to share with you a bench that I'm about to start on. I got this bench on Facebook, I wanna say it was $40, and the reason I chose it was because it is fairly sturdy, there's no wiggle, so I think it's in pretty good shape structurally. I also loved the back of it. I love that it had sort of this classic line, these tall spindles, I like the arms. And at some point, the back doesn't seem to make sense to the bottom. There are springs for the seat, which doesn't really make sense to me. And then there are these grooves on the legs that feel a little bit dated to me also. So I have some fun plans for the grooves. I think I can get rid of the springs pretty easily, but that's what I'm working on now. So I am hoping to remove the springs and just put a wooden seat on here. This bench will be mostly decorative. I certainly don't feel like I could sew a cushion that would look nice. I also just want this to be classic and that means no cushion. The reason I wanna remove the springs is that I would like the front board to rest right here and these springs are in the way. So I'm hoping that just wire cutters might work but I don't know. All right, that's not doing anything, so I need to figure out another way to cut the spring. I'm gonna use my Dremel, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it steady with pliers so that it doesn't snap back. Guys, this is not working. <laughs> My Dremel wasn't getting through these springs. They're old, they're pretty thick. Also, I'm sure my Dremel needs a new blade. But if I use, these are actually tin snips, but pliers would work. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of stretching the spring. And if you stretch it out enough, then it'll sort of come loose from the post that's holding it in place. So like I said, it's not super smooth but it's working and it's saving me a trip to the Home Depot to get another blade for my Dremel. Notice that the sides of the bench are getting pretty banged up. I'm gonna go and obviously sand most of the bench down to remove the stain, so I'm not too worried about that. I also think the seat is gonna sit right about here, so I'm definitely not worried about those, but I'll fill them in anyway. So here's another look at the grooves that I'm trying to fill in. So this groove here, these guys here, and these guys here. So what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to fill them in with the epoxy putty, and then I can shave them down with my sander just to make this leg feel a little bit straighter. So here's how the epoxy works. It comes like this. And you'll notice that inside is white and then around it is brown. This color on the outside, there's a couple different options. I knew I was gonna be painting this, so I didn't really care. I just went for whichever was closest to the stain. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna break off just a little bit. There's not a lot of working time for this, so you definitely don't wanna work with too much at one time. And then you are going to mix it together like you would with Play-Doh and you're gonna mix it together until you don't see any of that white. The whole thing is a uniform brown. Once it's totally mixed, you have only about three to six minutes to work with it. So again, you definitely don't wanna mix up a giant ball. Oh, I think I've learned from the other side that I really wanna focus on filling in the recess here and this actually may not be enough, but I was able to layer the epoxy on the other leg. So if I have to go back and add some more, that's no big deal. You don't have to worry about it being smooth. You don't have to worry about really anything because you can sand this. And so I was able to shape it quite, quite a lot on the other leg.
This is some leftover plywood that I had in my shed. It's a pretty good quality because I'm gonna plan to go around and route the corners. I believe it's three quarter inches, so it's probably a little bit thin, but I had it, which makes it free. I have mapped out a template, so hopefully I can cut out this shape and it will fit the bench, but I've been wrong before. I definitely screwed it up. So, to cut it again. Here's what I've done so far. I have gone ahead and sanded the entire thing. I've done a lot of work on the legs and now what you're looking at is this bench has been primed. I used a shellac based primer. It was a really dark stain and I wanted to prevent any bleed through. I have also screwed the seat into the base and I countersunk the screw heads and then filled over them with wood putty so you can't see them. Next stop, spray paint. I'm gonna add some color to this guy. The bench is finished and I am so pleased with how it turned out. It is not a perfect bench, but I don't know that it ever could have been. The seat's a little bit lower than would be standard and it's a little bit thinner than I think I would do if I were building it from scratch, but I wasn't. I was just trying to take an old bench and I was trying to make it look a little bit more suitable. I think the color is really fun in this space. I love how easy it was to change the shape of those legs using that Mohawk epoxy putty. That was a game changer. And overall, I'm really pleased with this project. Leave me a comment and let me know where you would use this epoxy putty. Do you have any furniture that has some dents or grooves that you need to fill in? I really enjoyed working with it. It was super easy and I'd love to see what you would do with it in your home. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a great day everyone.